Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Krista from Mosaic Party and Event Design. And today I have some more blooms by Mosaic to show you. So today we have these autumn leaves. They're a ginkgo leaf in this beautiful sort of harvesty golden color transitioning from a green as the, the trees start to prepare for fall. And I'm going to be making a table garland. Um, for a display and I want to include some more greeny ones that are just transitioning um, kind of more like this and even more green during the summer ginkgo trees are this brilliant bright green and then they turn into this golden yellow so I thought I'd show you how I'm coloring them and texturing them and creating these these are on little sprays and I'm going to be doing about five leaves per spray and then just attaching them or wrapping them around the lanterns that I want to put them on. So to make these, I will show you the supplies we need. Now, you may have seen these on my social media if you follow me there. If not, um, if you don't follow me, I can put the links in the description of the video below and I would be happy to have you follow because I post frequently all my paper blooms and other craft projects. So what you'll need is um, coffee filters. So I'm making these leaves out of coffee filters, the cone kind. I get them at a dollar store. Brand does not matter. So this is a very inexpensive project. Um, the, the better brand quality doesn't necessarily mean a better end result for um, crafting these particular leaves. So you can get these in a, a bunch of different sizes. These are number fours and number twos. So it just depicts on the, the size of the comb. So you can see here I have two different sizes and that'll just determine the size of your leaf. I like to use both because I get uh, different sized leaves out of them. So comb coffee filters, scissors, floral tape. And today I am working with both a brown and a light green. And that's because the, the stems of the branches of the trees are the brown and then each stem of uh, a ginkgo leaf is the light green color. So I'm using the tape to get my transition there. You will need craft wire. This is a very fine, a very flexible thin wire. I also get it at the dollar store. I get 80 pieces within one package for a dollar, so it's really economical. This is bow tying wire and it's a 26 gauge. It is in the floral section of my crafting um, dollar store aisle. But I love working with these when I'm doing petals that require a wire inside it or um, leaves. You will also need some tacky glue. I'm just using Alina's tacky glue. You will need a paintbrush for the glue. So a wide flat paintbrush works really well because we need to cover surfaces with the glue. You will also need a foam paintbrush for doing your coloring. And to color, we are going to be using gel food coloring. So today I've worked with a Wilton gel food coloring in a juniper green, a moss green, and a buttercup yellow. Your shades don't matter so much. You can use whatever color shades you want because you can mix and blend them to your heart's content. Um, gel food coloring is a much more concentrated food coloring in a gel paste. And you can get it from Wilton. You can get it from Americolor. There are some other brands out there as well. It's a much more concentrated pigmentation than um, the little bottles of liquid you get in the baking aisle at your grocery store that a lot of people have in their cupboards. You can use that, but your colors are not gonna be as vibrant for your craft project. So you'll need those. And I'll talk more about why I use a foam paintbrush as I'm working with it. You can use just a regular paintbrush, but the foam paintbrush it just helps with the saturation on the coffee filter. So, in order to make these, you will take your coffee filters. And I'm going to work with a small one and a larger one for two different size leaves. 
and they all have this seam on the one side and bottom. You can pre-cut that seam off if you want or just work around it when you're folding. So all you want to do is fold right up into just before that seam so you get the better surface area and you don't have to worry about working that seam into the back of your your petal or, or leaf if you folded it over straight to the edge you may cut into that seam so I'll fold to just before i'll do that with my smaller one as well you may find a pencil handy for this i'm going to show you by tracing out a pre-cut shape um, but i find generally and you've heard me say this before if you've seen my videos is that once I kind of get a template down for my designs, I don't really use my templates. Um, I kind of create them for my first petal or two so I know my general shape. But once I get going after I've cut a bunch, I know my general size on my coffee filter and shape that I want to work with. So this is just for the sake of showing you. Ginkgo leaves are this beautiful fan shape, quite often with a little notch, sometimes a really deep one in the middle and other little notches. For the sake of working um, this particular design, we're going to just have a general fan shape for now and then we, we're going to cut in extra details later when they're dry. And that'll make sense as we go. So I'm going to fold my little template in half and match it up to my folded seam. And I'm just going to generally create my guide. I'm not being particular here. I'm just getting the rough idea out. I'm going to create a smaller one as well. You want to make sure that you create um, that nice pointed stem on the bottom. It's going to help you attach it to the wire and give you the proper shape. So what you're kind of doing is creating almost like a, a really wide, shallow heart shape. If you've traced them out like this, you want to make sure that you cut on the inside of your line so that you don't get any of the pencil marks on your final product. And like I said before, you don't have to be particular. We're going to go in later and reshape them. So what you end up with is two leaves matching each other. And that's going to make one ginkgo leaf because we're going to glue wire in between the two and we're going to get a really nice, thick, durable leaf. So we've got two sizes. And I just want to talk about the scraps here. I don't want to waste this. So quite often before... I get rid of my scraps. I cut out just a very simple elongated, I can say that, elongated leaf shape to do olive branches later on. Um, I just sit these aside and I'm just, just very general with them. And I sit these aside for a day that I want to spend coloring and gluing and attaching and I make olive branches or other greenery foliage. I can't say that word by the way so I'm not going to say it again. You can all giggle at me. Okay so we need to color these. So you're going to take your foam paintbrush. I have pre-colored green food coloring in with some water. And I have a little bit of water ready to go in a dish for my yellow. So I'm just going to take a, you can take a toothpick or whatever instrument works best. And you want a good, probably quarter of a teaspoon per third cup of water. And it actually is easier if you start with your food coloring in the bottom of the bowl first and then slowly add a little bit of water just so that you don't get this uh, separation and really have to work it. But that's what we're going to do. So I did this backwards. Don't be like me. <laughs> 
warm water also would help dissolve this a bit better. I'm just smushing and breaking down that gel. Now this, I know it doesn't really look yellow. It kind of looks like a greeny brown. It's, it's really strange. But just to show you on a scrap, I will use one of my little scraps here. It actually comes out this really golden yellow. So always do a test for your color and your saturation. You want more food coloring to water to get a much darker, deeper color. When you're coloring um, coffee filters, as they dry, they get much lighter. They don't hold on to the pigmentation of the coloring. And for example, you can see I did these earlier and I had too much water in my mix and not enough color. When they were first painted, they looked dark like this. So you wanna go much stronger in your food coloring because as they dry out, they're gonna really fade out as well. Okay. So when you're working with coffee filters and food coloring, you want to always start with your lighter color first. It is much easier to blend your darker colors in and your darker colors will pick up much easier if there's a lighter base on it already. So in this case, I'm gonna start with my yellow and I'm just going to do my edges. Now, these ones, we're done exactly the same way. I just focused more yellow and a lot less green. But these ones coming up, I'm going to probably do a lot more green in them and just leave the edges yellow. So I'm working with a foam paintbrush because A, I can squeeze out all the excess and I can really use the paintbrush to draw out and blend the extra saturation in the coffee filter. And it doesn't matter if your whole petal turns yellow because the green is going to blend in with that nicely. Foam paintbrushes also help push into the pores of the coffee filter because they're very porous and uh, helps you just blend your colors a bit better. Now when it comes to the green you need a very little bit so I'm just picking up a little bit on the tip of my foam paintbrush and I'm going to push some of that excess out using the side of my bowl. And I'm just gonna pull up from the bottom and just hold it there and you can see it bleeds and blends itself. And it's going to keep going longer than you think it will. So before you add more, just give it a second and see. Now this is kind of where I left these guys. Um, but you. I want to pull a little more green in. So I'm just going to pull from the bottom up. That way I keep the concentration of the green down at the bottom instead of bringing too much of it up into my leaf and then I can push out the excess on my brush. Or you can go and get another dry foam brush or another paint brush as I splatter. I always keep a cloth aside here. Um, and you just want to blend that color in a bit. And that's that. So don't forget that you do have two petals here or two leaves. You can separate them if you want to for drying or keep them together. I would let them dry overnight. Um, you want to make sure that the color is saturated right through. Another reason why I use the foam paintbrush. And I just sit these aside on a piece of um, parchment paper or wax paper or a flat, smooth surface like this glass dish that I'm working with, or glass tray. You want to make sure it's a flat surface and not um, something like a wire baking rack because if you put this on a wire baking rack, you're going to get the pooling and pigmentation of the, the color as it dries and fades, and you're going to get all the lines from your, your baking rack. So make sure whatever you do, it's a flat, smooth surface. Let them dry overnight. They will relatively be dry within a couple of hours, but if you leave them overnight, they'll have just really nice pile of leaves to get going fresh with and not worrying about it at all. Because the next step we have is going to be working with glue, and because the glue is damp, if you already have a damp leaf, 
um, that's not quite dry, the glue could actually um, pool your coloring still if it's damp. And for an example, I actually just sat this on my dish a little while ago that had a bit of glue and water on it and it kind of pulled the color all together because these were still damp at the time. It happens when they're dry too, but it'll um, be a lot better if they're already dry. So these are pre-done leaves that I have. These ones have a lot more green in them. Um, like I said, I'm trying to almost do an ombre effect. So I have some leaves pre-done that are, have yellow on the tips, like these ones. And I'm going to work down to a brighter green, more sort of a late summer, early fall ginkgo leaf. I'm just setting those aside in a foam block. So what you want to do is make sure you know which sides line up. Keep track of that as best you can. You want to take your tacky glue and have your wires ready to go. I'm going to do two leaves at a time. Generally I do anywhere from two to four. It depends how quick you are. And you can get a little dish. I'm just going to work right on the glass here. Part of the reason why I use a glass tray. My honey works for a glass shop, so I always have extra pieces of glass for projects and displays. I've just got a little glass of water here, and I'm going to take my paintbrush, saturate it with some water, and pull it through the glue a bit. You don't want too much water in it, but a little bit of water in the glue will help it spread easier and not be so tacky that you're going to pull and stick your leaf to everything. And you're just going to pull and push that glue right to the edges. You want to make sure you get right to the edges, otherwise if the edges aren't perfectly adhered together, they will lift as they dry and pull apart from each other. Little tip and trick, I always use the end of my paintbrush to hold down my petals as I lift my finger because glue and fingers and paper will pull the whole thing right off your board. So the end of a, the brush I'm working with always kind of gives me a little bit of a easier lift point. <laughs> okay, so I've got two pre-done here. I'm gonna take my wire, try not to bend it as best you can. You want it nice and straight. You're going to press it to just towards the top and right down to the bottom point and you're going to kind of burnish it in. Okay. If you have any little globs, you want to make sure that you pull them off if you can because otherwise it'll create little textures that you don't want when they're put together. You're going to match up as best you can your other leaf and I have that one upside down. Don't worry if there's a little bit of glue on one side because we're gonna be adding a glue shiny surface later. Match it up as best you can. It may not be a perfect match, but that's okay. As you can see here, it doesn't quite line up, but we're gonna go in and clean that up later when they are dry. You could clean it up now when it's tacky, but then it sticks to your scissors and then doesn't get such a crisp clean edge, so. I wait till they're completely dry and I just press and rub those together and then we have our leaf and you just want to take that little bottom pinch it around the wire and give it a twist just gives it a bit of grab and adheres it nice and almost creates a cupping shape for your leaf you can spread it out a bit more but as it dries it's going to naturally curl up again we can shape those later if they curl, don't worry about it. Okay. And again, pinch, 
Oh, that very bottom tip. And that's why it's important to make sure you have a nice and elongated um, bottom when you cut them out. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe this up. And we'll move on to the next step, which is adding texture. So a ginkgo leaf has these beautiful veins running through it, lots of them. Gives it a nice sort of scalloped texture. And it is best to do that when these are still a little bit tacky from your glue. You can do it when it dries, but I find for me it works best when they're still a little bit tacky. All you're going to do is take the end of a scissors or a... Um, pointed tool. You don't want it too sharp um, because you don't want to tear through your paper and especially when they are tacky and damp they are going to be a little more uh, prone to tearing so be careful. And you're just going to take a tool and I'm going to draw on either side of that wire to pop that um, center vein in it. And starting from the bottom I'm going to start drawing and not pressing too hard, but drawing in my lines, splaying outwards. So I'm gonna always starting from the bottom center. And it is curling, but you can just flatten that out a bit. And you don't have to be exact. You don't have to be measured. As I always say, nature is imperfectly perfect so just get the general idea of the texture in there and if you find that they're too sharp of a lines they will smooth out with the next process when we give these a, a shine coat on them but you can hopefully see the difference it just gives it a little more life I'm following up the wire on either side and popping it out and then just starting from the bottom and splaying outwards in that fan shape. And then I would set these aside in a little foam block to dry. Don't lay them flat to dry. I find that they because they're tacky and like I said earlier, when they're damp, the color can tend to pool a little bit funny. So I always have like a little foam block set aside, a floral foam, foam block. You can come in and just clean up your edges now if you want to, if they're not quite lined up. Um, I tend to like to do it when it's drier, you get a crisper, cleaner edge. Sometimes it's easy to forget about it after when you think you're done with them. So do it whenever it works best for you. You can deepen some of your notches and little bumps and ridges. They're all a little bit different from each other. They're not all identical leaves. You can add a little more fringe on it. Just give it a little more life and shape. Easier to do it now after they're stuck together, the two pieces, than later on. When you do it later, or sorry, earlier on. If you do it earlier on, it's harder to match up the pieces when you're gluing them together. Alternatively, you could just glue two general pieces of coffee filter together and then cut out, glue them, get your stem in there, and then cut out your leaf shape after a bit. We all find what works best for us, and this is how I like to do it. All right. So we have our two green, slightly yellowing and aging ginkgo leaves. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come back with my little bit of water and, and glue paintbrush, and I'm gonna coat them in a nice thick layer of glue with just a slight hint of water in it and this is going to give us a nice um, finish on the leaves. You could spray them 
with like a UV uh, shine coat, which will also help the color um, from fading in, in future with if, it, if it's in the light or sunlight. I still do the spray coat later to protect them, but I give this a glue coat or Mod Podge works as well. Um, because it gives a beautiful texture on the leaf and makes it more lifelike. And I'm just gonna set that aside to dry in my foam block. It will dry clear. It won't stay milky. I have just enough glue on my dish here to finish this one. I love it when you have just enough of something. Or when you are cutting out a bunch of petals and you want a certain number and you grab the exact right number of sheets of paper or, in my case, coffee filters. Something about having just the perfect amount of something that feels like meant to be. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let them dry. I'm going to wipe down my surface. And we're going to look at how to finish them up. They'll take a couple hours to dry with that glue on the surface and the glue in between the layers. But you will end up with some finished leaves. You could shine them up on both sides too if you wanted to add some glue. I think I have one more here. This one's still a little tacky, so I'm gonna let that dry more. And you can see they really curled up on me. And you can leave them like that if you want, or you can flatten them out and pull them and reshape them later. Because there's a wire in there, you can shape them however you want prior to arranging them or once they're in arrangement. But if you haven't cleaned up your edges just yet, this is when you would want to do it. So just go through and do that on all of them. Checking both sides. And I can see that that folded up in the glue a bit, so I'm just going to roll it out and I'm probably going to take a little bit of glue on my finger after and just to make sure that's stuck down. Really important step is to clean up your edges. It's what gives your product that little bit of a higher end um, finish, especially when you're charging what you should be charging for paper flowers and paper arts because it takes us a long time to make these projects. So if you take that extra step and care in finishing them up and giving them a little more realistic edging where you don't see the mechanics of what you've created so much, you'll find you can charge a little bit better for them. If you don't take that extra time and step, it's noticeable for people and you can't quite charge as much because it's not as finished. Okay, so those are cleaned up. I might go back in and, and finish them a little bit better later. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to add just a little bit of floral tape. Actually, a couple of these I've already added my floral tape. I think it's just the one that I don't. So I always have a little bit of green at the bottom to transition from the, the green of the leaf stem. And I only go about three quarters of an inch in the green. And to create this sort of splayed spray, and this is quite quite how they are on a, a tree because I'm going to go through and I do have varied sizes here and you want to mix them up a bit. I'm going to put them all together roughly at about the same uh, base of the stem height. And I'm just going to pull a couple on the bottom a little bit longer. Kind of fan them out a little bit 
just to see my placement. And that, I'm gonna twist my wire together just to hold them. And that's where I'm gonna bring in the brown. Stretch and activate your floral tape. And I'm gonna leave some of that green showing at the top of each. And I'm just gonna finish the stem in brown. And if you wanna make your stems um, thicker, I would just go through and do another layer of brown. You could add another uh, thicker wire in there, especially if you want a longer stem. Um, but sometimes I just want it just a little bit thicker. So that's just another coat of the brown on it. The more floral tape you wrap around it, the thicker it gets. My fingers are a little bit sticky here from glue. I also find that this brown floral tape is um, quite sticky, different qualities. Okay, so and then I just come through and I splay them out in my shape. And the beauty of this is that you have a wire in there, so you can go through and use your finger to curl them however you want. And this is really handy for later when you have them in an arrangement because then you can kind of go through them and shape them however you want. You can also take um, the end of a pencil or the end of a paintbrush or some sort of tool. And because it's nice and thick and has that gloss coat on it holding it all together, you can kind of give a little bit of extra curl at certain edges. And of course, we all know that withering leaves late into the fall start curling up and drying out. So they're not quite as perfect and flat and lush. And there we have it. Some Yinko leaves. I'm just going to move my tray. Make a little noise. <laughs> so some Yinko leaves. And I'm going to start attaching these to each other's stems probably like this and create a garland and just work my way down and then when I get to another side I'm going to flip reverse and do the opposite way. So super easy. You can do this too. Happy crafting everyone. Cheers. <laughs>